Good afternoon and welcome everybody. My name's Judd Hendricks and I'm the work with Interfaith Paths to Peace and this is our three o'clock educational time that we do every day and this is specifically our focus on becoming the beloved community. So we do educational programs on different aspects related to uh, becoming a, a beloved city, a city where everyone is included and feels like they belong and has what they need in order to thrive. I'm really interested today in this topic, um, and it feels so timely. Um, how do we reduce prejudice that leads to discrimination? And specifically, how do we, how is prejudice and bias formed? And then what can we do as a community, as educators, as um, civic-minded people to help reduce um, bias and prejudice towards in what we say the psycho the sociological term is outgroups. How do we um, diminish stereotyping and prejudice, unconscious, conscious prejudice, which we know leads to discriminatory behavior uh, and leads to the polarizations uh, actually that we're seeing now in the uh, political realm. So our conversation today uh, will look at how is prejudice um, formed uh, from psychological and sociological reasons? And then what can we do about it? Um, how can we create programs and events that help reduce that prejudice and discrimination? So I'm excited that you've uh, decided to join us today. If you're joining on Facebook Live, you're welcome to add uh, questions or uh, comments that you may have. I'm going to um, do a, a screen share here of a presentation that I have um, that will give us more information um, about what we're talking about today in reducing uh, prejudice. So if you are joining on Facebook Live, feel free to uh, include this in your, uh, include a comment or a question in the chat box, and we'll be sure to um, include those in our conversation. Thanks for uh, participating in what I think is a really important um, topic, especially as we go forward um, to decrease some of the polarization and assumptions that we make about people and the bias and the, then the discrimination that happens because of this. I'm especially interested in this from a peacemaking perspective with Interfaith Paths to Peace. A lot of our work is uh, in this area is how do we decrease people's stereotypes or the assumptions that they make about other people and how do we bridge these really significant divides that are happening in our community uh, in our world today and especially i hope that we'll think about how we bridge this this political polarization that we're experiencing now between democrats and republicans but also the other dynamics that that points to, specifically the rural or urban divide, uh, some of the racial divides we can see if we look at the political map that um, has been expressed, especially the last two uh, elections, you can see a huge um, polarization in our country and in our community around ideologies, but those ideologies are also related often to um, race, uh, the related to religious perspectives, and specifically the urban and rural uh, distinctions. So I'm really interested in applying these methods of reducing prejudice to some of the major dilemmas that are facing us um, currently in our community and world. What I want to look at first is um, just real briefly look at what I think is the important work that we are about doing, which is uh, prejudice reduction and equity building. These are two different sides of the same coin. If we're going to create a, a beloved community, we're going to have to reduce prejudice that creates these divides, but we also have got to build a more equitable community. Today, I'm really going to be focusing on um, prejudice um, and prejudice reduction. There's a variety of ways in which prejudice, uh, which is often unconscious or a conscious um, bias against people, or it could be uh, more of a bias for 
your in-group. So we'll talk about in-group and out-group a lot. And there are a couple of different primary ways in which prejudice and discrimination are, again, prejudice is an attitude or a belief that then manifests itself in discriminatory behaviors. And um, that's why it's really important for us to look at these both conscious and unconscious dynamics of prejudice and bias. From a sociological perspective, uh, there are a variety of reasons why uh, discrimination is created. Um, and I won't go through all of these, but these are some concepts in sociology um, related to the formation of discrimination or prejudice. One, um, you can see some of these, uh, a realistic group conflict theory. Um, that is just a idea that other people may hold different ideological or um, different perspectives than we do. And because they're different, then we other them or put them in a category separate than ourselves. Um, there's a, a couple of other theories. One is called the integrated threat theory, which I think is really interesting. We, we do know that um, a lot of discrimination that is happening is based upon the fear that the other group may either have something we need or take something we need in order for us um, to thrive and survive. So they become a threat around resources. And then um, they become the objects of our projections. And so we then stereotype them. We experience them as a threat to our resources, but then we put negative behaviors and intentions uh, on them. Uh, as a form of, of of prejudice and bias against them. So those are some social um, contextual reasons for discrimination. We also know that there are what we call individual or psychological reasons why we um, have prejudice. And one of the things that's really important to notice is, is creating an in-group and an out-group or um, making distinctions between people is what we do as humans. We know that the brain does this. It categorizes people into boxes. For example, um, because the brain is really interested in being um, quick processing, it doesn't see everything as an individual. It naturally categorizes things. For example, when we see a car, we don't actually see usually the, the car itself. We don't immediately know what make and model it is. We don't see the details of it. We just see in our brain or think in our brain car. So we take everything that looks like a car and just categorize it as an automobile or a car. And that the, that's the way the brain doesn't get caught in having to see each individual thing. It sees categories. And so we do this naturally. And we also do that naturally with people. The challenge is when we associate other characteristics to those categories that may not belong, and that's in the form of stereotyping. But these are natural things that we do as humans, and so it's important to note that um, we're gonna have to work to overcome those because they are natural forms of what we do as humans. We also know that we, in our socialization process, we identify first with our, our family, our tribe, our nation, our group. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with that, only if we get caught and are unable um, to see the fullness of the other when they're uh, in what we consider an out group. So again, there are a variety of reasons, sociological and psychological reasons, that we develop bias and prejudice. And again, ultimately, those things aren't anything wrong with them, except for um, when they lead to forms of discrimination. So a, a bias or a prejudice is natural, but when it leads to discriminating against people because of that bias and prejudice, then um, it's a significant problem. And for example, um, we know that through tests, um, uh, unconscious bias tests, that um, white police officers are more likely to associate black people with having a gun if they have an object in their hand than if it was a wallet. So there's an unconscious bias test that you can go onto 
the Harvard implicit bias tests and um, show that there is a connection uh, bias um, towards that in, in, in police officers, specifically white police officers. Now, the good news is we can train police officers to make a distinction from that. So we can do something about natural bias and prejudice, and that's what we're going to be talking about. But I wanted to make the, the point that that's why bias and discrimination or bias is so important to engage and to reduce it because the discriminatory behaviors can be quite significant for people. Um, uh, we know in employment or other ways of um, that minority groups, out groups get uh, access to resources. If there's discriminatory behavior, it has a significant impact on them. So um, these are some of the reasons why um, personal and individual create prejudice and discrimination or uh, prejudice that leads to discriminatory acts. So what I want to look at now is specifically um, different ways in which we can um, reduce prejudice and discrimination. And then I'm going to give you some examples of ways in which that has been done. And we're going to look at a couple of uh, really cool um, videos that uh, are examples of how um, prejudice can be reduced um, and ways in which people are doing that. So, um, there are categories of what we call prejudice reduction methods. And so I want to look at some of these um, and give some examples of them. So if we want to reduce prejudice towards uh, outgroup members, um, there are some uh, scientifically proven ways that work better than other ways to do that. And that's what we're going to cover here. Um, the first uh, group of approaches is what's called uh, intergroup contact approaches. And this is simply where you bring people together over a period of time to um, essentially build relationships. Or, um, and we have found that this is probably one of the most meaningful and effective ways of reducing prejudice, bringing people together essentially in relationships. Um, some of the work that's been done is, um, and there's a paragraph here that says, um, or a sentence, the optimal conditions for this include equal status between groups in the context of a given situation of shared goals, authority, support, and cooperation, as opposed to competition. So when we do bring groups together, we can create spaces where um, they have shared goals, where they're working together for something, and that becomes then the container around which they build relationships, which are the major um, uh, relationships are the major spaces in which we decrease stereotypes and get to know other people. And so um, we've seen a variety of ways in which we can do this with, with different groups. You bring them together um, for an activity. There's a really good video that came out um, that I want to show. Um, it's actually a, it was done by Heineken. Um, and uh, this shows what we would call intergroup contact theory and has some, is showing the methods around which um, they're breaking down stereotypes. So I just want to show this. Um, I would describe my political views as the new right. I say that I'm left. Feminism today is man-hating. I would describe myself as a feminist, 100%. I don't believe that climate change exists. We're not taking enough action on climate change. I think it's about time these people got off the high horse and started looking for credible problems that actually exist. It's absolutely critical that trans people have their own voice. That's not right, you can't, you know, you're, you're a man, be a man, or you're a female, be a female. Women do need to remember that we need you to have our children. Could I be friends with someone that says the woman's place is in the home? Um... <laughs> Right, OK, well, I'm an expert at flat packs. If you have any trouble, just watch me. So it looks like I've got your instructions here. I think so. Let me help you. It's not just that bit there.
Describe what it is like to be you in five adjectives. Okay, frustrating. Dedicated. Opinionated. Lucky. Ambitious. Offensive. Solemn. I have ups and downs. Strong. I want to say attacked. Misunderstood. Name three things you and I have in common. We're both male, we're both confident, and we're both loudly spoken. We know each other better than people who've known each other for ten minutes should. You seem quite ambitious and positive, and you've got this really, um, got a glow. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your aura is pretty cool. I'm sensing. Are you, uh, for military or something? People have said that, but there is no, really? there is no history. So are you then? Ex. Ex-military? Um, yeah. If you're ex-military, I'm very proud of you already. Well, so. I grew up. Uh, in a bit of a rough state. I've experienced homelessness. I've known what it's like to have absolutely nothing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely most grateful just, just for life. We've only just met, but I think you're the sort of person that would listen to me and we'd have a discussion rather than argue. Yeah, you could hang out with, man. Let's go. My chance. Goodness sake. You're right, mate. Fitter than a look. Perfect. Oh, yeah. There you go. So basically, I think we just bought a bar. Yeah. OK. Here you are. <laughs> Each take a bottle and place it on its corresponding markings on the bar. Attention. Please now stand to watch a short film. Feminism today is definitely an excuse for misandry, man-hating. If somebody said to me that climate change is destroying the world, then I'd say that is total piffle. So transgender, it is very odd. We're not set up to understand or see things like that. I am a daughter, a wife. I am transgender. I feel like the battle for feminism definitely isn't done. The fight is never going to be over, if I'm honest with you. You now have a choice. You may go or you can stay and discuss your differences over a beer. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> you for a second then. Well, I'm having a drink. I'm having a drink. Yeah. I want to discuss. Beer. Yeah, beer and discuss. Cheers. At the end of the day, mate, I'm reaching out to people. With you. Yeah. And, you know, even if you wanted to convince people about your point, the productive thing to do would be to sit it's down engaged. and have a engage. It's engage. I've been brought up in a way where everything's black and white, but life isn't black and white. Yeah, I'm just me. <laughs> yeah. Smash the patriarchy. <laughs> I'll give you my mobile number, you give me yours, uh -huh. and we'll keep in touch. I'd have to tell my girlfriend that I'll be texting another girl. <laughs> she might be a bit upset with that, but I'll have to get round there. I'll have sure. to tell my girl that she'll have to lump it. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you can see there, um, this is what they used was a method um, called intergroup contact theory. And uh, I really like this video because I think it shows, um, you know, some of these important elements of reducing prejudice. One is they had to work together, you know, to create something. So they had a shared goal. Um, they were equal in their status in the sense that they came together in a space that neither of them knew wasn't one person's space versus another person's space. And then they began in this process of self-disclosure. And we've seen how important that process is in sharing things about ourselves where we can connect around certain elements that we may share rather than focusing on those elements where we're different. And even though, as they showed in this video, um, there are significant ideological differences, when people have an opportunity to know one another in a different context of uh, working together, then they're able to, um, in other words, integrate, in many ways, integrate their differences easier rather than making their differences the, the way in which they've come together. And we can see that, um, this is really one of the challenges we face as a community and a culture right now is that we remain in our segregated spaces and geographic segregation um, is one of the huge ways in which these stereotypes continue to get promoted. And since we're specifically now not seeing many people face to face or having these kind of opportunities where we 
are meeting strangers, it's no wonder that we continue to see this increase in polarization because it's so much easier to make these assumptions about people outside of relationship with them. And social media is not helping in that. In fact, that's one of the real challenges we have when we communicate with each other over social media. It doesn't have the, the communicative capacity to build relationship. And so, you know, people's ideologies are what we lead with, you know, whether it's through a meme or through a short sentence about what we're supporting or what our ideologies are. Um, and I think this is the real concern going forward. Or how are we going to create opportunities for people to come together um, across our differences, work together, play together, get to know each other, and then maybe we can have the space to talk about our differences um, rather than leading with those. Um, the second part is what we've already seen, what's called disclosure approaches, and that's where people share opportunities with one another or share information about themselves. And an example of this is the big table that we've been hosting. We didn't host this year, but we have for three previous years, where we bring people together around these conversation cards uh, where that basically asks these human questions and you get to share your story, and that's a form of self-disclosure. And we know that brings people together where we connect around um, our, our shared humanity. Another approach is what's called social identity approaches. And social identity approaches attempt to make a particular group identity, group-based identity, such as race or gender, less salient to individuals from different groups by emphasizing alternative category, um, categories of people. So they, they may be in opposite groups in one way, but in other ways, they may be more connected with each other, uh, or they may share commonalities in being an in-group together, which make their out-group less salient or less important. And these are called what's called decategorization. Um, so um, you Decategorization involves teaching people from different social groups to focus on a person's unique individual characteristic rather than their group identity. Um, we have what's called recategorization. That means you uh, put them in a category, um, a larger category by which their individual categories are then subsumed. Um, there's an example of this, that a program that we did several years ago called We Are Louisville, where we emphasized um, our identity as fellow Louisvillians rather than our separate identities. So our separate identities became subsumed in a larger identity of being Louisvillians. Um, this was a video that we worked on um, actually four years ago um, in response to the administration's banning of Muslims coming into the United States, uh, a group of us came together. I want to uh, thank Define American that helped pull this video together. But this is an example of what we call recategorization that decreases prejudice. Louisville is the river city. This is our community. This is our community. This is our community. We were built by the French. And the Irish. African Americans made this city. We came from, we all, came over from all over the world. We were immigrants. We were enslaved. We were explorers. We're the Midwest. And we're Southern. We are, we we are, are Louisville. Not Louisville. Louisville, what, what means? Louisville. <laughs> Louisville. Louisville. It's not that hard, people. We are Louisville. We are Christians. We're Muslims. We are Jews. We're no particular religion at all. We are foodies. And drinkers of fine spirits. Athletes and dreamers. This is where stars are born. And champions are made. We look out for one another. Now, as we
we always have. We stand firmly with our immigrant neighbors. Some of us came here years ago. And some just days ago. But we are all Louisville. I am 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 Louisville. So you can see there, that's a, what we call recategorization, which we found to be a really effective way of reducing prejudice is that we subsume certain identities into a larger identity. Um, and that then reduces the prejudice or gives us a, a place to start in building uh, relationships with, with other people. Um, some of these other models and examples of things that we've done, um, um, a thing called cross categorization is when individuals from opposing groups are made aware of the fact that they both simultaneously belong to a third separate group um, and members in this group uh, is emphasized. And that's an example of what we just watched. So um, these are some of the models. And so uh, there's also another group called intergroup interactive approaches, um, interdependent approaches. Again, interdependent approaches are like um, where you come together and you're interdependent with one another um, to do something. So you have a, uh, a job or um, uh, some larger goal. Uh, often we find that this is a perfect example of sports teams. Um, in fact, sports teams, I th uh, think especially for young people, are often one of the, the spaces where relationships are built and they come to identify themselves um, across categories, um, both building relationships and having a greater purpose than themselves. And so sports teams, opportunities to work and play, with other people um, are a very effective form of prejudice reduction. Um, we can move down to what's called individual approaches. Before we do that, I wanna share another video um, that is an example of some of these. Um, this came out of Denmark um, and did some really good work here. Um, and so I just want to show this again. You can see um, how some of these theories are put into practice in this experiment that Denmark did. It's easy to put people in boxes. There's us and there's them. The high earners and those just getting by. Those we trust and those we try to avoid. There's the new Danes and those who've always been here. The people from the countryside and those who've never seen a cow. The religious and the self-confident. There are those we share something with and those we don't share anything with. Welcome. Det kommer til at stille jer nogle spørgsmål i dag. Nogle af dem kan godt være lidt personlige, men jeg håber I vil svare ærligt på dem. Hvem herinde i rummet var klassens klog? Hvem er bonusforældre? And suddenly, there's us. We who believe in life after death. We who've seen UFOs. And all of us who love to dance. We who've been bullied. And we who've bullied others.
And then there's us, the lucky ones who've had sex this past week. <laughs> we who are broken-hearted. We who are madly in love. We who feel lonely. Bisexual, and we who acknowledge the courage of others. We who have found the meaning of life, and we who have saved lives. And then there's all of us who just love Denmark. So maybe there's more that brings us together than we think. TV2 Denmark. All that we share. So you can see again, they're using some of these principles around recategorization, um, where you um, may come from diverse groups, but you realize you have other things in common um, that are also really important. And again, those are all what we call intergroup uh, contact approaches. Um, there's also um, individual approaches that we can use to decrease prejudice and discrimination. Um, and individual approaches don't uh, require us to be in groups, um, but it's work that we can do individually, which uh, right now, most of us that are doing this work um, are having to work in these spaces. Um, and they break these approaches down into affective approaches and cognitive approaches. Um, affective approaches are ones uh, that try to create empathy and compassion, feelings of connection and concern for others. And they break the, the affective ones into perspective taking. And that is simply the ability to take the perspective of another person. Um, some of the w methods that we've used that have been very effective is this walk a mile in my shoes migration simulation um, that um, I created several years ago where you um, actually have an experience, a simulation of being, of knowing what it would be like to be a refugee or an immigrant, um, having to flee your country, enter into a new country and experience the challenges and tasks of being a refugee um, or an immigrant. And so that's a simulation we do. There's also a really powerful thing called a poverty simulation. Um, where you experience some of the challenges of those who experience poverty. Uh, these are powerful, well-documented forms of building perspective uh, towards other people. Um, and they work um, well to help uh, decategorize um, uh, people and help us uh, connect with them as humans. The... Um, also, empathy, of course, um, any times in which we can uh, create a sense of empathy for others. This is where film and hearing and telling stories is really powerful. Um, and whenever we can create spaces for us to hear the stories of other people, uh, we can take their perspective and experience affective empathy for them. There's also what they call cognitive approaches. And these approaches um, mainly deal with uh, the way we think and re, um, reconditioning our thought processes about people. And a lot of times this is just information, education. We can educate ourselves that breaks down um, misinformation or builds knowledge about another group that may uh, confront or create cognitive dissonance between what we thought and then what we know. And there are a variety of cognitive approaches. Again, these can be um, really helpful, um, but they're not as strong as the other approaches that we have talked about and um, that are intergroup contact approaches. So um, those are some lists of some of the integrated approaches, uh, kind of mix a variety of these things. Um, one of the things we can do is read and listen to stories. Um, this is why it's really important to create reading material that 
where we read about other people's experiences, unlike our own. I find that movies and documentaries are really powerful to help us experience this uh, sense of empathy and compassion. Specifically, I don't know if you've seen the video, the documentary 13th, um, but it's a really powerful um, look at the criminal justice system and race and uh, a lot of stories and narratives that people have experienced, which we know are, are powerful forms of decreasing uh, bias and stereotype. Um, there is one more uh, I want to share. This was a really, I thought, powerful. One of the, some of the work that we're doing is to try to help people realize that we are interconnected deeply. Um, one of the things we know is that race is a social construct. 99.9% .9 of our DNA is the same across races. And so uh, racism is really a construct. And if we can help people identify as shared humans, um, then we know that they have more space for our differences and uh, can reduce the discrimination that comes from that. Um, this was, uh, again, an, another, I thought, powerful video that shows this interconnectedness that we have with one another um, and that even strangers um, who we bump into are deeply related to us and our lives are intertwined with one another. So I'll um, close this part with um, this video. These people have a lot to talk about. They just don't know it yet. In a minute, we'll show them that they have more in common than they think. Hej alle sammen. Tak fordi I er kommet. Thomas, vil du stille dig der? Og Aske? Thomas, du bor med din familie i et dejligt hus på Vinkelhøj 8 i Viby. Før I flyttede ind, var det faktisk dit barndomshjem, Aske. Det er rigtigt. Ja. <laughs> øh, fodbold i haven om sommeren. Og... Det kan jeg lige forestille mig. Ja, præcis. <laughs> Vi laver igen nu. Mathilde, vil du komme herop? Ha. I to har faktisk stået over for hinanden før. Okay. Men der var I 12 år, og det var i en rugbykamp. Okay, ja. Kampen endte i øvrigt 42-0 til Askes hold. Tak for kampen. Ja, tak. Inger. Mathilde, den nat, du kom til verden for 27 år siden på Christiania, var Inger det første menneske, du så? Var du min jordmor? Nå. Nå, fint. Kan du huske det? <laughs> Anna, i 2012 er din mand ude af løbentur. Pludselig falder han op med hjertestop. Ja. Heldigvis er der en, der reagerer hurtigt og redder ham. Knud. Vil du komme herop? Tak. Godt at hilse på dig. Just below the surface, a total stranger can turn out to be someone you're actually connected to. Det er godt et stykke tid siden. Someone who rouses forgotten memories. Like the very first kiss. Someone who reminds you that you're not alone. 
<laughs> but that somebody else also has a bulldog named Prebin. <laughs> Someone like Thomas, who put out a fire at Vibeka's place. We are so tired for Come so did. Someone you've been gaming with for years, but have never met. Altaman, move, little salt. The line. The top fragger. You know, family can't lend you. So four women are not even met. None have seen none before. If we approach each other, we might find out that we share the same destiny. Rana and Maha, you came to Denmark from Syrien for four years ago. Doyd and Jan. I har en lignende historie fra 2. verdenskrig. Jeg har prøvet at være flygtig, og jeg vil aldrig glemme det. Det har betydet usigeligt meget. Shalom. Og Rikke, det var din oldefar, der risikerede sit liv ved at sejle Jan over Øresund den oktoberaften i 1943. It's easy to mind your own business. It takes a little more effort to mind the community. But doesn't the feeling of having something in common, something that connects us, make it all worthwhile? TV2, all that we share. So, that's again another powerful realization. Um, that we are all interconnected in ways and don't really know that until we enter deeper into each other's stories and each other's experience um, to be able to find out all those different ways in which we may be connected. So that is um, some examples of what we will call prejudice reduction models. And so to summarize all of that, I do want to say, um, that we can reduce prejudice and discrimination. Um, we know that we can do that. We know one that, you know, prejudice bias is a natural thing that we naturally do that and form that as children. Uh, and we have to work to overcome that. And the good news is we can, we can recondition the way we think we can, um, identify ourselves with larger and larger circles. Uh, we can reach out to people to hear people's stories. We can learn about other people's experiences. And through all of those methods, we can create um, less bias and prejudice, which we know is what leads to discriminatory behavior. So the challenge is that we have to each individually take it upon ourselves, especially now, because we don't have those natural places where we are having these face-to-face -face encounters. And we um, are often identifying more strongly with that which is different than that which is the same. And all of that creates, um, I think, conditions where we find ourselves right now, where we're alienated and separated from each other, and um, which creates polarization and discrimination. So I'll close uh, unless there are any comments or any questions on Facebook or anybody that's joining us on Zoom. If you have a question or a comment, feel free um, to include that. And um, thanks for giving a little time this afternoon to uh, understand better how we can become a beloved community, how everybody can have what they need in order to thrive. Hope you'll come back and join us. Um, other uh, days next week. We always have nine o'clock programs at nine o'clock in the morning, different devotionals uh, and meditations from different religious traditions. And then at three o'clock, we have a variety of programs that are educational uh, to help us um, learn more about each other and become the kind of community that we want to uh, be. So thanks for joining us uh, on Facebook. And for those that joined us on Zoom, may you have a blessed and peaceful day. And uh, weekend, also encourage you to, to keep Louisville and our country in your prayers um, and light a candle uh, for all of our community, no matter um, what happens with the vote. We've got a lot of work to do to heal our community and we can be a part of doing that. Thanks for being with us today. Peace.